righty. Welcome to church tonight. We're going to start off with uh, singing a song on number 283 in your songbooks. We'll go ahead and stand. It's 283. We'll get them, uh, get things moving here. We're singing Joy Unspeakable. Think about what we're singing tonight. Ready? Here we go. I have us found his grace is all complete. He supplied. Hold on. Yeah. I ain't never led no songs like this. I'm like a bus song guy. So we ain't got no, no music in buses. We can't get no pianos going. So that rhythm that he was talking about ain't there. All right, let's try it again. Now God's grace is all complete. He supplied every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet. joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. All the hell has never yet been told. On the third, we'll do the third. I have bright and clear living in the realm of praise. Oh, the same. Welcome, everybody. Full of joy. We had a wonderful message this morning about kindness, and that was a fantastic message. So we appreciate everybody coming back tonight to Shenandoah Bible Baptist Church, and uh, we're going to have a good time tonight um, preaching the Word of God, hearing some teaching, doing some singing and fellowship, and having a great time. So I uh, really, really appreciate uh, tonight. We had three people get saved this morning. It was fantastic. Three people. Uh, last week, a lady by the name of Noelle Morgan came in, a uh, real estate friend of mine came in. She got saved, born again, fantastic. She went home and told her mother and father, that came from way down somewhere in Bluefield, West Virginia, came all the way up, and they came today and got saved. Amen. 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 It was awesome. It was wonderful to see. And now she's looking for brothers and sisters to get saved. Amen. So that's been a blessing. And then another uh, young teenager, I think, got saved too. So that's awesome. So a really great day. And that's what it's all about. Um, preaching the word of God, watching people get saved, changing lives, you know, walking with the Lord. It's fantastic. So I'd like to welcome everybody. I think uh, now, can y'all come down? Ushers, can y'all come down with your welcome packages? And um, is anybody here a first-time visitor? Anybody out there? No first-time visitors? Well, sorry, guys. How about second-time visitors? Third time? Four time? Here you go. Get that man one. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I guess we're all family here. That's awesome. Now, let me go ahead and open up in a word of prayer, and we'll begin the services here. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you and praise you. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you that we live in a free country that we can come and serve you and worship you and sing and praise the Lord and uh, fellowship. We thank you so much for that. Thank you for the freedom we have. We pray for our leadership in America. We pray for our leadership here in the state. Uh, we pray for our pastor and our staff, each and every one of them, as they go down and, and get refreshed and draw close to you and just uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. We thank you so much. And, uh, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that uh, you'll be here when two or three are gathered together today. Or we'll be right here in the midst of us. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 
right, hold on. Don't sit down yet. Uh, uh, all right, I'm throwing a wrench in this one. Since we got no, no visitors, we shouldn't scare anybody away because y'all can come back for a preacher next week. We're going to sing a bus song. We're going to split the church in half tonight. Now, it's a good split, not, not a bad split. We've had enough of so we're going to do a hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. So let's see, we got, everybody looks fairly even. So we'll start off with this side, hallelujah, then we'll do this side, praise ye the Lord. So if you're on a bus route, you know how the song goes. Junior churches all know how the song goes, so we got to keep up with it. So here we go. We got to start over here. Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. Hold on, but ye the Lord. All right, all right, that was, that was okay. Y'all woke up there at the end, uh, you, a little slow over here. So, okay, so we're going to switch it now. Y'all are going to do hallelujah. Y'all are going to do praise ye the Lord. All right, we good with that? All right, here we go. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise ye the that was good we got our bus song we got it out of the way we all did good we woke up at the end hopefully we don't uh, get in trouble too much so the next song we're going to sing take your song books and sing we're going to go to 395 395 Do you have a song that you can sing? Here we go. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis a melody of love. Yeah. Second, I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. And I know it's there to stay. In my heart there is a melody, there is a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there is a melody. Seated. Amen. We almost can have a quartet up here, brother. Let me get a couple more guys here. And get brother on the piano. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I hope everybody had a good day today. A beautiful day. Beautiful October day. I told my wife on the way home today, it won't be long. The leaves will really be turning in western Maryland. I know they turn down here in West Virginia also. But the greatest uh, color in Western Maryland is when you go up Route 68 and uh, up towards West Virginia line. Oh, some of the most beautiful mountains 
if you ever get a chance to go up that way, up towards Oakland, Maryland, uh, this time of the year, they say the leaves are really going to be really turning good this year. So hopefully we'll have some good pictures. All right, well, this part of the service, I got something special tonight. Uh, we're going to kind of, I just want to just kind of share something with you. I enjoy working with this deacon board. I've been a deacon here now at Chenandoah for 11 years. And uh, seen these guys come on, some older fellas like Brother Bill back here. And, and the younger guys that have come on, Brother Bill Stanley, he's just come on here just not too long ago. And uh, him and I think alike. He's an old timer. <laughs> But uh, it's just good to be able to work with these guys. You would uh, not believe when we set in on the meetings, we have a meeting once a month with Pastor, and uh, some of the, we go over everything, everything, every, everything in the church that we talk about. The missionaries, we bring the missionaries on, we vote for the missionaries, and we bring that to you all. Everything that takes place here at the Shenandoah, uh, we got that on our shoulders. So it's a great responsibility, but I enjoy these men. These are godly men. These are men with wisdom. We pray, we, we uh, laugh, we cry. Some of the greatest times in our meetings is when we can get down and pray and get alone with God and just each one of these men pray. I'll tell you what, it gets a hold of you. I know when uh, I was going to for down to John Hopkins for my brain tumor, I asked the preacher if he wouldn't gather some deacons together and, and anoint me with oil, and uh, my, what a service. And one of these guys came in and prayed over me, I'll never forget it, and uh, how the Lord's presence was very real. So it's good to be able to work with some godly men. You know, we support the, the preacher, we're there to help him. I told him when he came here, I also told Pastor Dane the same thing. We're here to help. We're here to help you all. We're here to help the preacher. He's got a big load. The preacher's got a big load to carry. And uh, our main thing that we do is care for the widows. We have, I guess, close to uh, 37, 30, maybe close to 40 widows and the widowers. We got three widowers here in our congregation. So we got a lot to take care of. Uh, a lot of birthdays. Uh, my wife uh, yesterday, uh, made some homemade vegetable soup, first time this year. <laughs> and boy, I love homemade vegetable soup. She made a pumpkin pie. And Mrs. Renner, one of our senior citizens here, she can't come anymore, she can't get out and walk. So my wife said, I'm gonna take her over some vegetable soup and a pumpkin pie, uh, you know, slice of pumpkin pie. And so she did, but these are some of the things that we do. We, we try to take care of the widows. You know, no one knows the shoes that you walk in till your mate's gone, whether you're older, you're middle-aged, or younger. When that person that you've married slips into eternity and you're, go and you're alone, there's a lot of lonely moments that go through your time. And so we're there to help the widows, and we're trying to, to give them support and be there for them. So tonight, I want to just honor a, you know, a couple of our deacons. Uh, uh, in January, it was uh, 1920, um, or 2020, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm way back, I'm way back there, brother, 2020, uh, you know, brother Eric Gunther came on, Eric's sitting right up front here, he came on our deacon board, and a very humble man, a very meek man, a man that we uh, uh, talked about in our deacon board, certainly was worth the value of coming to be a deacon. And we prayed about him, we prayed his family, his children, and uh, my, what an asset he's been to our deacon board. A man of wisdom. You know, you, you, know, you, you, you know, he gets in on the conversations. Mrs. Roach is his interpreter. She comes and, and, uh, in, and interprets for him. But uh, he's a big blessing to our deacon board. And I thank God for him. And I'm going to ask him to come, and he's going to share with you, uh, you know, so, just a little bit about the death ministry. He's going to share with us tonight. So, Eric, you come, brother. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm afraid if I use my voice, I will know a little conflict with my daughter interpreting, and it makes people up. And who's talking now? You know, which one? You know. Pastor John asked me to give my testimony, share with you tonight. Some of you already know, some of you are new. So I'm going to share my testimony again. Okay. How my life has been since I've grown up as a Catholic. Every day was Catholic. I went to, um, for Easter and Christmas, holidays, when the Catholic church was open, we went uh, when I was little and I grew up. I remember to, I used to sit in church and I asked my mom, what is that priest trying to say? And my mom just, she would share with me a little bit, but after time, she got tired. And she told me that, I'll, shh, just be quiet. So I just sat, I was fine, I was quiet. So I decided to look around. I see the church, the big room, and I see the candles over there, and the statues of Mary, and see, I see Jesus dying on the cross over there, and I see the windows painted, Jesus alive different times, and I wondered, now, uh, that time that I was wondering, why, why is Jesus so, what, what's so important about Jesus? What exactly is special about this Jesus dying? I was, question, I was questioning, I didn't understand. I remember when I was about 10 to 11 years old, I had a bunk bed, and understand, I was the only boy in my family, I had two sisters. So my parents bought bunk beds sometimes when I asked to have a friend over, so I was ready. I had a bunk bed. But anyway, that night, I laid ready to go to bed. I was looking at the, that top bunk because I was sleeping on the bottom. And I was looking and I was thinking, what would happen if I died, if I, my, my eyes closed and all I saw was darkness? What would happen after I died? And I just wondered. Anyway, as life went on, I went to Gallaudet University. I was a student there. Anyway, I met one of my dear friends. He, hey, do you mind if I um, talk to you after practice? And I said, fine, sure. I mean, after practice, I guess. So I went and met him. And then when he started sharing the gospel with me, what I remember, the Catholic Church, the photos, and I thought, I remembered, they're starting to match. They fit with what he was saying and explaining those pictures. And I understood. And then I asked one question, why not? So I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And that same friend asked me to go with him to a deaf Baptist church in Maryland. Fine, so I decided to go. And I sat and I was amazed. That pastor, that deaf pastor, he was preaching the word of God, and I understood clearly, and I, it gained my understanding. And I was Catholic growing up, and I learned, and I felt like I learned so little. But when I saw the sermon, I understood, and I learned so much. So I, and that made me grow in faith, and I was ready. That language was the key to help me understand. I had the opportunity to save, serve Jesus Christ at that deaf church. And then the Lord loved me to, and my family to come here in Martinsburg, West Virginia. And it looked like an odd place to look for our, for our family, so we were looking. And we looked, and, the God, and God led us to this church, and we met Pastor Bain. I thanked Pastor Bain for willing to meet with me. Talked about the deaf ministry. It truly, it was open to it. He was really open to it. To start a deaf ministry in 2018. I was so excited. So at that time, I was wondering, I wanted deaf people to have the same opportunity as me. Can hear the word of God through our language, sign language. And the word of God, get a better understanding. And the word of God and be more close with Jesus. And feel more encouraged and challenge them to reach other deaf peoples for Christ. Now, since the deaf ministry 
so um, I've been really, there's a lot of deaf people that they love to have activities. So I try to set every once in a while, as I did, um, you know, picnics and games and, you know, potlucks and rooms and, you know, is a, a using it as a reach for our face, uh, we use our Facebook through other people and their friends, as well as, I wanna let you know that since I've been here, my kids know sign language. So sometimes they meet deaf people and they go to the rescue mission. And my daughter met a man there. He was, and she was able to communicate with him. And that was a way that if, um, that God knew that that man needed the gospel. So I ask you, please, would you mind praying for me and my deaf ministry to grow? Thank, I thank you for your time. By the way, you know, he visits his widows. Each one of us has about five, five widows, so you take eight men, five times eight, 40. 40 widows in our church. Uh, and he visits. He visits. Uh, he says he has someone go with him and purpose. But he goes and he knocks on doors. And uh, my, what zeal. What zeal he's got. He inspires me to see how he's just ready to go for the Lord Jesus. Yeah, well, that's snake, brother. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, praise the Lord. Okay, now I'm going to talk about Brother Stanley sitting behind the piano over there. I tell you what, I. I came in here some time ago during the pandemic when I had COVID. After I got over that, uh, I didn't go to my Sunday school class because uh, uh, with junior high boys, I uh, waited a little while. And so I came in here with my wife into this class, and Brother Stanley was teaching. And uh, I didn't know anything about him much. I didn't even know that he was Ben's dad until after I was here for a little while. And uh, my, was I ever impressed with his teaching, his Bible teaching. If you sat in this class on Sunday morning, you know what I'm talking about. And I was so impressed, I went up afterwards and met him over there when he came down out of the, out of the piano stall there. And uh, I said, brother, where did you go to college at? Where, where did you get a degree to know, to know how you know the Bible? And all he did was just held his Bible up. He said, brother, there's where I get it right there, the Word of God. And... Uh, I tell you what, he's, he's been a blessing to me. He's an old timer. He's, he's straight on the line. Uh, we got, still got some of us around, brother. <laughs> but I enjoy him. He's, he's got a lot of wisdom. Uh, he's got a lot of input, and he's come on our deacon board, and what a big help he is. You know, we got a, we've got a job to keep this church right, to keep it straight. And we've got to, we, each one of these men up here, we've vowed to the Lord that we're going to continue to keep this church where it needs to be. Churches are falling apart. Folks, listen, tonight as we sat here, uh, there's a lot of churches, fundamental Baptist churches that stopped Sunday night, uh, uh, you know, meeting. They stopped their Wednesday night meeting. They sold their buses and got out of the ministry. And uh, my, we, we've got to keep it right. And we are determined, these men sitting behind me here, we are determined to keep going straight for God and keep this place solid for the Lord. I know the pastors that went before us, that was their prayer to, when they left to make sure that this church continued to go and stay, stay true to the Word of God. The old King James Bible, we're going to stick with the old King James. They're going to stick to three services a week, and we're, we're determined to do that. So you pray for us. It takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of backing. I know some folks, uh, uh, you know, get behind us, and then there's some that just kind of borderline. But anyway, uh, we'll be nice to them. You know, preacher preached about kindness this morning. We got to be kind. I, I, sometimes I got, I got trouble with that. I don't know about you guys, but I got trouble being kind sometimes to people. And that sermon this morning helped me really. Okay, we're going to move on here. Uh, I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. We're going to take the offerings. I'm going to ask them to come forward at this time. I'm going to ask Brother Kerry Mann to come and pray over the offering. Brother Kerry, you come, brother. God bless you. Well, let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for this evening. Lord, I pray for the pastors and assistant pastors and their wives as they're away. You just give them, uh, give them the, uh, the time they need away just to, to get away and just uh, um, 
just have some fun and just uh, regroup and come back to us even stronger. Lord, I pray over the offering tonight. Lord, I pray that you would bless the gift and the giver alike. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. He can play the piano, too. I'm telling you one thing, buddy. He can make them keys ring. <laughs> All right, okay. Now we're going to have some fellowship time, so we don't stand, and we're going to fellowship a little bit, shake hands, go and talk a little bit to your friends, spend some time.
righty, we're going to start singing Count Your Blessings on uh, number 191. Number 191. We're going to think, think about what you're singing when we're singing that. Count your blessings. What kind of blessings you got? You got all kinds of blessings. You got family. You got, you got, we got a life. We got a God. And uh, let's count what we have. This first sentence, first verse, when upon life's billows we are tempted, tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one. So when life's tough, start counting your blessings. Things will come, you'll, things will start coming together. When you start counting blessings, all the hard time kind of goes away. Here we go, verse on verse one. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. On the second, are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem call to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Third, when you look at others with their lambs and gold, think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. last so amid the conflict whether great or small do not be discouraged God is over all count your many blessings angels will attend help and comfort give you till your journey's end count your blessings name them one by one count your blessings see what God has Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Let's get our Bibles out. Remain standing while I read the scripture, please. <clears throat> Second Timothy, chapter number one, verse number five. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. <clears throat> Remain standing while I pray, please. Father in heaven, Thank you, dear God, that I can call you my Father. It's not because of anything that I've done. It's because you love me to the point that you gave your only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, which included me, that whosoever shall believe in him shall have everlasting life. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of serving with these godly men as a deacon. I count it a privilege a responsibility and an accountability someday. Lord, I thank you for the ones who come out this evening for the evening service. Pray that you'll minister to our hearts. I know we all have individual needs, and I ask you, dear God, that you minister to the needs that we have according to.
for your riches and glory to provide these needs. Thank you for our pastor and his wife and other pastors who, and their wives who are away for a retreat. I pray, dear God, that you'll bless them with your presence. May it be a time of spiritual enrichment for each one there. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll bless Brother Jake this evening, fill him to the spirit, calm his nerves, give him clear thinking, clear speaking. May you fill him with your blessed Holy Spirit as he speaks your word and truth and in love. I pray, dear God, that your word would have free course and be glorified. We thank you, Father, for your presence this evening. We just ask thee, dear Lord, that your, your precious will would be done in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We ask all this in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated, please. We have a special number at this time. The Gaylord sisters are going to come and sing for us. They're going to sing for God, to us, for God. Thank you, ladies. God bless you as you sing. Thank you, Brother Bill. I almost forgot about Brother Stanley. You know, I'm so excited about these deacons up here. So I'm going to ask Brother Bill. He's going to come and give a testimony. And uh, I want you to listen. I'll tell you what, he's got a good story to tell. He's my friend. He's, and me and him kind of yoke together. We kind of rub shoulders together. And, uh, uh, he's a bus driver like I am. And he, he's just enjoying church. Amen, brother. Love you, brother. God bless you, your heart. Well, this was kind of spontaneous. So if I, uh, if I kind of get tongue-tied or if I get long-winded... No, nothing, nothing worse than a long-winded deacon that don't know when to sit down and shut up. <laughs> but to take you back a long ways as a six-year-old boy, I knelt on the floorboards of an old church that eventually, well, actually the church had been, the history behind the whole thing is there's a church that was started in Jaredstown. It fell apart during the French and Indian War. Half of that group of people went to Loudoun County, Virginia, founded the Catoctin Baptist Church. Now, the Catoctin Baptist Church meant nothing to me except they left the building behind that was vacant. When Bible Baptist Church needed a building, they moved into that building. On the floorboards of that old church is where I knelt and asked Jesus to be my Savior. Amen. The long and short of the whole story is my whole life is filled with stories like that, that it seemed like it was supposed to be destroyed. It wasn't supposed to be, but God. Amen. There's been several times in my life when I didn't understand what God was doing. I've learned a lot of hard lessons over the years. We've been here several times. Incidents happened that I didn't understand, and perhaps there were times when I ran from God. I know just because I was saved as a six-year-old boy didn't mean that I didn't question a lot of what took place. I went through a lot in my teenage years. Finally, I sat down and I said, all right, just because I'm a preacher's son, the Bible doesn't say I'm going to heaven. Just because I'm a Baptist, the Bible doesn't say I'm going to heaven. So I sat down and started reading the book of Romans. When I got done with Paul's description of God's grace for sinful man, I said, okay. I knelt and asked for your grace on the floorboards of that old building. Though at a six-year-old boy, I did not understand the doctrine of grace. I did not understand the doctrine of justification. I didn't understand all of those big doctrinal names. But God, you confirmed in my heart that you're still real. In the meantime, ups and downs through the ministry, up and ups and downs through different churches, rejected by some, to the point that one preacher actually asked me to leave the church. He said, we're changing. And you're not changing fast enough with us. So folks, now I understand what God had in mind. He brought me back to a place that hasn't changed to help see that it doesn't change to what the devil wants it to be. 
Last Sunday, we went to a church that was solidly fundamental in the 1980s. We walked in the door. They had a drum set, a different Bible on the platform being sold, and we won't go into all of the rest. We walked out the door. But here's the interesting part. We called them on the telephone and asked them all the questions. And they said, yes, we're fundamental. Yes, we still have traditional music. Yes, we still use the King James Bible. Yes to every question. Folks, you can't count on where you're going or what you're going to do. That blessed old book that we still hold here called the King James Bible is the only thing you can count on. <laughs> Men lie to you and so will the devil. Amen. Through the ups and downs of a long history of wondering what in the world God was doing with my life. Now I know why he's brought me back. So now with your help, we will keep this church a church that is strong in the gospel of Jesus Christ. That was sermon number one. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, we have a special treat. The uh, Gaylor sisters, Jessica and Hannah, are going to sing for us. I don't think I've ever heard you all sing together. For the world that's lost in darkness, for the saint who's gone astray, for the sinner blind but searching, for the child in need of faith, for the homeless and forsaken, for the hungry and the cold, for the prisoner and the captive, for the young and for the old, there is a remedy. For every sin sick soul, there is a cure for all. All the pain and discouraged and dismayed, for the mocked and persecuted, for the battered, for the wronged, for the scarred and for the wounded, for the weak and for the strong. them of us. You know what? They sing like that. Mom and Dad's got to have some of that talent. They got some of them genes. That, that came from somebody over there. Uh, yeah. Brother Gaylor, he's laughing. He, he could probably sing away. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm so happy for the Gaylor family. They came here. Praise the Lord. They've been a big asset to our church. Thank you, girls. God bless you. Now it comes to preaching time. The most important time of the service is the preaching of the Word of God. The old time King James Bible preaching. Man, I tell you, I love preaching. I'm telling you one thing. I was brought up on old fashioned preaching, and uh, some of these guys up here have been brought up on it. And uh, you chew on it and chew on it, and it, it'll get in you. It'll digest inside of you. But uh, we got a preacher tonight. I'm telling you, we got a quarterback. I tell you what, uh, the first strings down in Virginia at a resort, they're down there having a good time. Brother, Brother Waller's down there uh, preaching to his staff, and, and we're up here in the second string, and uh, we're still in the ball game. Amen. God bless your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Brother. Brother Jake, you know, I, I remember not too long ago as I came through here, I, I would see Brother Jake pushing that uh, baby carriage and had all them babies in that thing. How many was in there? <laughs> two, three, two. Okay, two at a time. And he was really uh, serious-minded about taking care of that carriage and pushing them babies around on the outside when we would leave. And uh, I used to tell my wife, there's a, there's a guy that's just... Uh, uh, just surrounded his family and loves his family and cares about his children. And that's one thing that I've, uh, I've noticed about Jake. He's a family man. He's a, he's a husband. He's a father that cares for his family. I've learned to love him. He's, he's one of our youngest deacons on, on our deacon board. And uh, Pastor Wollard and Pastor Bain both wanted to train some of our younger men and get them on there because us old fellows one day are going to pass on unless Jesus comes and we'll all be up there together. Amen. But uh, I love Brother Jake. He's, he, he's, uh, he's got input. He's got wisdom. Uh, he's not afraid to take a stand on things. Uh, he's like his dad. Where's John at? Oh, there's John sitting over there next to the wall. <laughs> I tell you, praise the Lord. Uh, I praise the Lord for him. But he's going to come and preach for us, and you get your Bibles ready. And Brother Jake, God bless you, brother. Thank you, sir. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you, church, for having me come and preach today. Um, I just want to tell you, this is something big on my bucket list. Okay, I have a spiritual bucket list, and this was something probably about five years ago that uh, God just laid on my heart. I mean, I, I, I didn't finish Bible college, but I just fell in love with God even more. And uh, I just wanted to one day maybe get up here and to share my heart with my church. Amen? And Because I, I, this is the only church I know, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, I, I won't forget thinking about certain sermons. I would be in my truck just praying, talking to God. And there was something that God gave to me one day. And I'm like, if I ever had the privilege of preaching to my church, this is what God gave to me. And then a few months ago when Pastor Woolard uh, asked me to preach, I knew exactly where I was going. And uh, I am very excited about tonight. Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, go ahead and open up to 2 Timothy chapter 1, if you're not already there. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1. I'm going to be honest with you, this morning when preacher started preaching, he went to 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I got scared. I'm like, no, he's, he's preaching my sermon for tonight. And obviously his wasn't until like verse 16, but I did get scared. I'm like, no, i got to go home and rewrite a new, a new sermon. So, but obviously he, he did not. Uh, it was, like I said, in verse 16. So if you don't mind, I'm going to be reading the first eight verses, okay? This is Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers, with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayer night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of, my, of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Be not thou therefore, I'm sorry, be not thou, thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, there's several things that jumped out to me when I was reading this, okay? 
the first thing was forefathers, okay? Forefathers, and everyone knows what forefathers are. Those are people that came before you, like maybe your brother Shank, amen? Brother Shank's like one of my forefathers in the faith, okay? Uh, people who came before you, and then obviously we see three times the word remembrance. So it's all about the past, thinking about where you came from. Uh, are we good on the mic? All right, sorry about that. Uh, just remembering where you came from, what, what your family history is, those who are the Christians that trained you. So, because I, 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 I love the past. I love old-fashioned, old-timey things. And I love this first, talking about the forefathers that came before us. And then I see this word unfeigned, okay? I, I've never heard the word unfeigned in my life, okay? Uh, so I looked it up. Because this is not, nothing I hear. I've never heard anyone say it. It's not in anyone's vocabulary. So I looked the word unfeigned. What does that unfeigned mean? Okay? Could, could God just have put, you know, when I call to remembrance the faith that is in thee? But God felt it was important to add this word unfeigned. So I looked it up. It only appears four times in our Bible. Okay? So this word unfeigned, it means sincere. It means genuine. It means real. It means true. So this faith that Timothy got, okay, that was passed down from, from his grandmother to his mother, not to him, it is a genuine faith. It is real, okay? This is something that, um, like I said, is true. It's, this is not some false doctrine. This was no, like, Catholic or Muslim. It says this is true. It is genuine. It meant the world to these people. It, it was very real to them, okay? And then there was another word that, I mean, I just came unglued on, Okay? So it's saying unfeigned means sincere, genuine, real, true, and then it says on force, okay? And I got excited, okay, because, you know, the, the faith that my parents passed down to me, no one made me trust in Jesus Christ, amen? It was a decision I made. Everything I do is because I made that decision. And I love how we see a grandmother, yes, she passed down her faith to her daughter, and then her daughter passed her faith to Timothy, okay? But Timothy got it. It became real with Timothy, okay? And uh, I, I just get excited about things like that where God's real to people like he was to Timothy, to his grandmother, and to his mother. Amen? Amen. So, uh, and then there's another word that I, I, I love, okay? And it's in verse 6. This is, wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. And that's my goal tonight. That's my dream, okay? I'm preaching to myself tonight. Because, like I said, God gave this to me, and I just wanted to share it with you all. I just want Shenandoah to get stirred up for God again. Amen? I want us. We have a great pastor. We have a great vision. God's been good to us. Let's just get stirred up about certain things, okay? We get stirred up about football and basketball and everything else, but let's get stirred up about Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's get stirred up, okay? Yes, Satan's day is coming, okay? And, and that stirs me up. But I want to get stirred up about the faith that has been passed down to me through my ancestors. Amen? Amen. Of people... Like from our church, not just my family, but my church. So there was a few things I, I wrote down, because obviously my name's not Timothy, my grandmother is not Lois, and my mother is not Eunice. So I'm like, I gotta, you know, write my own thing, okay? So I wrote down the very first point I have is I wanna call to remembrance uh, of my church's unfeigned faith, people who taught me in the past, okay? And one of the very first people I think of is Pastor Don Smith. He was my very first pastor. I had the great honor and privilege of growing up here. I had Pastor Don Smith for 10 years of my life here at Shenandoah. And under his ministry, obviously, I watched my parents grow in Christ. And because of my parents going to church and being faithful, I got to hear about Jesus Christ. And at the age of seven years old, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And I remember I was sitting right over here. This is back in the old days when you had green carpet and the green seats and everything else was brown. It wasn't brown or white. It was just brown. It was still in the 70s. Amen? And uh, I remember, like, the week prior, I went to my mom about salvation, how I, I, I'm getting it. I understand who Jesus Christ is and, and everything, and I, I want to go to heaven one day. And I, I realized how real this thing is, okay? Amen? And um, uh, there were some things my, my parents said that kind of got me turned on about Jesus Christ. I, I realized how hell was a real place and how heaven was a real place. Amen? And so I won't forget, I, I told my mom, my mom told me, she said, Jacob, she said, you'll know when, 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 because uh, Jesus will knock on your heart. I was just a little kid. She said, Jesus will knock on your heart. And I won't forget, Pastor Smith was up here preaching, and it was during the invitation, and man, my heart just started pounding. I mean, just, <laughs> and I was like, I said, Jesus knocking on my heart. And I remember telling my mom, like, Mom, I want to get saved. Like, he's knocking on my heart. And she grabbed my dad, dad walked me down here, and Brother Tom Tennis, 
was a soul winner that, that worked right here. And I remember, baby, whoo, he took me out back in the uh, choir wedding room, opened the Bible up, led me to Christ. And then, of course, I, I did what I think every Christian should do. You get baptized. Amen? You just obey God. You just do what he says. Don't question. I know it's hard sometimes, but you just don't question it. Just get baptized. And then, Brother Mike Bajan baptized me. And obviously, I'm not lifting up man tonight. I'm lifting up God. But I love my forefathers. Amen? Because I wouldn't be here today if people didn't. Because so many people quit, like, like Brother Bill was saying. So many people quit. And it's, I thank God I had forefathers like a Don Smith, like a Mike Bajan, like a Tom Tennis that just kept on keeping on. And um, that was the first thing that I just uh, called to my remembrance the day I got saved and, and just how neat it is. I, I know I'm only 30 years old, but I feel like an old timer to talk about these names that maybe some of you don't even know. You know what I mean? I just, I just think that's neat that God, for some odd reason, has decided to have me born to John and Brenda Kidwell. And I went to Shenandoah my entire life, and I got saved. Amen? Amen. So, and of course, I can go on and on and on about many other good memories I have here. Okay, I think of uh, people like Ray Montgomery. Amen? Who remembers Ray Montgomery out here? Amen? Uh, <laughs> talking about leaving some things to the next generation. Okay, and that's what I'm going to be talking on. He left a deer recipe, okay? It was Uncle Raymond's deer bologna, okay? And if anybody wants any of that, my dad has the recipe, okay? Okay, amen? I, I remember that was like a big thing, okay, around here. It was Uncle Raymond's deer bologna. I won't forget Brother Raymond would help out Brother Mike in, in junior church. And imagine, I just have so many good memories of this place growing up here, man. People that, you know, I looked up to. Men, amen? Men of God. Okay, not, not wimps, not sissies. I'm talking about men, hardcore men that worked a job, amen, that weren't wimps, okay, men of God that said, hey, there's something about this Jesus Christ. I'm following him, okay, and that's what I want to be to my kids. I don't want to give up. I don't want to quit, amen, because there's too many people, because, listen, I get it. Everyone's been church hurt, okay? I've been church hurt. You've been church hurt, but you just don't quit on God, Amen. And then second, I put down, okay, I want to call to remembrance of, my, of John and Brenda's unfeigned faith, okay? These are my parents, obviously, John and Brenda. I watched my parents grow in Christ as a little kid, okay? There's many things that some people might not call sin and other people might call sin, but God told them to give certain things up. And I watched them just obey God. God said, give it up, you give it up, amen? amen. And, but I just didn't see God take things from them. I watch God give them things that were, that were even better, okay? I watch my dad go soul winning. My mom, likewise. I remember growing up here. Thursday morning was ladies soul winning. I remember watching my mom go soul winning on Thursday mornings and be back here at night with my dad, and they went soul winning. I remember watching my dad going to men's prayer meeting as a kid. I remember watching my dad join the, the bus ministry for the very first time. But my dad did something that I never saw any other Christian man do, okay? It was he introduced it to his children, okay? Me and my brother, I'm not lifting me up in any means. But I remember as a little kid, my dad felt the need of introducing God to his kids, amen? And I remember as a little kid going to men's prayer meeting and praying with my dad and maybe another man. Months go by, and then I won't forget, they're like, hey, Brother Kidbar, are you okay with one of your boys praying with Brother so-and-so over here? Because he, he doesn't have a prayer partner. And I remember as a little boy praying with grown men, okay? And I think that's what we need to do with our kids, is take them to, you know, a ministry that you're a part of. Don't exclude your kids. Amen. Show your kids God and the things of God, okay? Because you wonder why so many people AWOL on God is maybe they were never introduced of how, how great it is, how real it is, Amen. And then I, and another thing I thought about was obviously, uh, it was a, on a Saturday, I won't, I won't forget, I went with my dad. This was obviously under Pastor Don Smith era. We were upstairs uh, during the uh, men's prayer meeting. It was the Persian room back in them days. I remember my dad telling me, he said, Jacob, he said, uh, we're going to be a little bit longer today because I told Brother Mike I wanted to join the bus ministry. And I remember as a little kid going with my dad, going to the bus meeting, which was over here now, and... Um, Afterwards, uh, we, we, we went with Brother Mike, and we split up. And, I, and I, Brother Mike started hitting, hitting his bus kids, and he told my dad just to no, knock on some extra doors. And as a little boy, I was probably seven, eight years old. For the very first time, I watched, I watched my dad have his New Testament out 
and he led a man to Christ, okay? And that just did something to me, man, just thinking about how my dad did things, and maybe, and it convicts me, because I'm like, I'm not doing those things. You know what I mean? Is it not real to me like it is to my dad? My dad's a first-generation Christian. I'm a second-generation Christian that's been given so much, and I'm like, man, <laughs> I'm pretty bad. And I, I just want to kind of hit, hit a reset button because I have kids. Brother Shane talked about how much I love my kids, and I do. And I just want to do the same thing that my dad did, that he showed me and my brother the things of God. And I want to pass that on to my kids. Okay? Um, here's just something funny, okay? I, just, I, I got to add some humor to it, okay? Obviously, you know my dad. He loves hunting. Amen? Who likes hunting in here? Does anybody like to hunt in here? Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. So my dad, obviously, wanted his boys to get into hunting. Amen? So he didn't wait till we were 15, 16 years old and say, her, her son, this is a shotgun. This is how you load it. Okay? He taught us at three and four years old. Okay? You, you got to start back then. I remember I was telling someone the other day, I won't forget my very first hunt with my dad. I was four years old. Hunter was three. We lived, we lived in a trailer park right next door here, and we went in the woods. And me and Hunter were just talking. I mean, we, we don't know. We're talking, having fun, playing with sticks. Okay? <laughs> and I won't forget watching my dad go, shh. He was very patient. He was, shh. And then he shot the fox, okay? And we were pumped and everything. But I learned so much from my dad because there's so many people that I see, and sometimes I'm guilty of this. You have your kids, you're like, oh, be quiet. You know what I mean? Oh, just shut up. You know what I mean? Stay with your mother, okay? Your kids don't need that. If you want your kids to turn out right with God, you know what I mean? And, and, and to take what you've given to them and run with it, go even farther with it, then maybe you include your kids. Be patient with them. Amen? Don't, don't, don't just be rude and leave them home with mama. Amen? Introduce them to, if, if it's real to you, because obviously it was real to a couple ladies in the Bible, like a, a, a Lois, like a Eunice. It was important to them. It was real to them. It was so important to them that they passed it on. Amen? To the next generation. Okay? Amen. All right. <laughs> I got to see where I'm at now. Forgive me. Um, uh, and then the one of the things I wrote down about my mom, okay, I wrote this. Things that my mom taught me. My mom taught me how to pray, amen? When someone does something against you, pray for them, amen? And that's why I want to pass it down to my kids. I won't forget, I was in school one day, and I had a teacher that was kind of rude to me. That made me mad. I was hot. I went home, ran my mouth to my mom. My mom said, go to your bedroom, pray for him. Pray for him. And I said, I ain't praying for him. He was rude. He was in the wrong. My mom said, just be quiet. Go to your room and pray for him. And I won't forget, I went on my knees. It, it took me a while because I was upset. I was angry because, I mean, this person humiliated me, okay? And I won't forget going and just giving in to God and just pray to God, ask God to help this relationship out. And I won't forget the very next day, this teacher, a teacher, walked up to me and said, Jacob, he said, I was wrong. I'm sorry for what I did. And I just saw God. Like, that's something that I'm going to tell my kids how I saw God because I went and I prayed. I gave, it, I gave my burden to God, and I watched God convict this person. You know what I mean? And the person apologized, and that friendship was mended. And I watched my parents even go through some things in their Christian life such as that. And I watched my parents always pray, always pray. My parents have given up. Their, their feelings have been hurt just as much as anyone else, maybe even more. Okay, you, you can't go to, to a church like this and not be offended and get hurt by people. But I watch my parents, they say, hey, God has me here. I'm not here because of a pastor. I'm not here because of you. Okay, I'm here because this is where God has me. And I get so convicted because there's times in my life where I'm ready to quit because Brother Rocky Roach didn't talk to me today. You know what I mean? Or Ben. Ben said something that was smart to me, okay, and it convicted me. And you, and, and you just give up and quit. Okay, and I'm not picking on anybody. I'm just saying, this is what I've seen. As a Timothy, this is what I've seen. And it's like, it's, it's not good, man, because you don't want to be, be remembered as that person that quit. Because you know why? You might be saved, Dad. You might be saved, Mom. You might even have kids that are saved, amen? But you're going to have grandkids one day, okay? And they may not get to hear the gospel because they're going to look at you and say, well, you a walled on God. You know what I mean? That's why I keep going, okay? I know it's hard. I know it's tough. But I got children that I want to spend eternity with, you know what I mean? And show them that it's real, that it's genuine, okay? Obviously, I can't, I can't force them, you know what I mean? I want, it, I want them to get it, amen? I want them, I want it to be real for them and say, man, I like 
what I saw in my granddad, what I saw in my dad. I want it to be real with them. Amen? Amen. And then lastly, I, I got a few things here, and then, then I'll be done. Okay? Ask myself, what can I do to pass uh, my faith down to my kids? Number one, introduce it to them. Introduce it to them. Like I said, with my brother and I, with anything, hunting or, or, or the Lord, it started at an early age. He introduced it to us. My parents introduced us to the faith. Number two, obviously, I've said this a million times, make it real. Don't be fake. Okay? Don't, don't live one way on Monday through Friday and act like you're a holy Christian on Sunday. Make it real. Be genuine. Let them see you pray. Let them see you walk with God. Let them see you when, when you're going through that battle in your life, when, when you're ready to give up and quit. Let's make it real for our kids. And then make it fun. I put make it fun. My parents, any, anything we did, it was fun. Be honest with you. I won't forget there were several mornings where we would get up on a Saturday morning go kill some squirrels, and then came back down here for the bus meeting, okay? That was my life, okay? That's the only, the only thing, two things I know is hunting and church. That's it, okay? And I loved it, okay? The reason I love it is because my dad introduced it to me, and I loved it. And I want to pass it down to my kids, amen? amen. This is a funny story. Um, obviously, I love watching hunting videos. And I watched this hunting video a couple months ago, and it was of a dad and his little boy. And his boy killed his first buck, and the boy's crying, the dad's crying. They're all pumped, crying. I start crying. And Barbie's like, why are you crying? I was like, that's going to be me and John Luke one day. Okay, That's something that I love, I'm passionate about, and I want them to get it. Amen? Amen. Okay? I just, like I said, I love everyone in here. I want me and you to get fired up again for Jesus Christ, and I want me and you not to quit. Okay? Trust me. Like I said before, I know it's hard. I know there's things that we feel like we've been, you know, uh, misjudged or whatever, but let's just keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, and, and let's think about the next generation. Amen? Let's think about your kids. Do you want your kids dying and going to hell? No. So let's just keep it real. Let's be, if, if we sin, get right with God. Amen? Amen? Don't cover it up. Just get down here, get right with God, and make it real. Make it fun for your kids, man. I mean, and I love it. I, I love everything that God has given me, and, and, and I don't deserve it. I mean that. I, I've been too blessed, like I said, by men like Pastor Don Smith. I make Bajan, they've given me some things. My parents have given me things. And it's not right, not right, that I just give up. Amen. Brother Shank. Amen. Amen. That little boy can preach, can he? That's the first time you've ever preached here, is it, brother? It is first time. Hey, glory to God. You were fired up, brother. <laughs> Amen. The zeal of the Lord took over. Amen. All right, let's all stand. We're going to have the invitation. Let's all stand together, and we'll, we'll pray. Father, we thank you for Brother Kidwell. I thank you, Lord, for his zeal for you. I thank you, God, that he grew up in a home where he's got, uh, he's got a testimony of a mom and dad that loved him, a mom and dad that cared about him, his brothers and sisters. Lord, they, there must have been something in that home that was right because, uh, uh, you know, he's turned out on the right side. And, his, and, Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless him. The Lord, bless his class in Sunday school, his, his college class there. I pray that you would uh, just bless him in a special way. Now, Father, I pray as we come into the invitation, Lord, that you'd speak to hearts. And, Lord, the altar's open tonight. And I pray that uh, there's folks here tonight that are unsaved. Maybe you're not saved tonight. You need Jesus as your Savior. You're welcome to come. There's room at the altar for you tonight. For the cross is level. God can forgive us of our sins if we just simply come by faith. And Lord, I pray that you bless this time together in Christ's name. All right. <clears throat> You're welcome to come. There's a need in your life tonight. You need to come to the altar. The altar is open. Thank God for the old altars in our church. A lot of churches have taken them away grace of God, this altar will stay. We'll keep it here. You can come and kneel and pray. You know, Brother Jake talked about serving the Lord tonight, a young man that grew up in a home that, that his dad set the example and his mom. And Lord, that's much needed today in America. Our homes are falling apart. You know, good homes make good churches. 
That might be the reason why our churches are falling apart, because the home first falls apart. And I thank you for the testimony of, of Brother uh, Kidwell. I thank you for his uh, zeal for his uh, forefathers as he thinks about those that have passed on, Pastor Smith, Mike Bajan, Lord Brother Tennis, great men of God that pastored in this church and Lord that led ministries. I pray tonight, if you're here tonight and you've just let some things fall and fail in your life, you would receive the joy of the Lord back into your heart. Unwavering joy, unwavering faith that Brother uh, Jake talked about tonight. The real, real sincere faith that can only come from God. God would stir you up, make you a new person. I know in my own life, I need to be stirred all the time. It's very easy to, to slip away, very easy to get stale on God. And uh, you get around some unsaved people, and you stay around them a while, and that rubs around on you. And you've, you've got to get to church and get to God, get in your Bible, get on your knees and pray, and ask God to help you and give you what you need. So you come, you come. Father, we thank you for those that have came tonight. I pray, Lord, that they would meet with you, and God, you'd meet with them. And Lord, that the cares and problems of this old world, Lord, that they would leave them at the altar and leave them to you. And God, you'd take care of them. Watch over us. And Lord, I pray as we leave tonight that you would just go with us, traveling mercies as we travel home. Lord, give us a good week and bring us back on Wednesday night. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you and give you glory for what you're going to do. In Christ's name we ask you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you Wednesday night. Brother Kerry's got some announcements. So, Brother Kerry, you come. I'll give you a few announcements and then we'll pray and leave. Uh, first, we have soul winning on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, church Wednesday with Patch Pee Wee Summer Farm. For the teens to be here the early for for uh, early dismissal for that and then for the mission conference october 27th uh, through the 30th be here and on the 29th for the meal um, don't forget to look in the bulletin for what sides you're supposed to bring and then also i was uh, told about the main dish do not forget the main dish they do not want a bunch of salads and vegetables they want a main dish also and then for the bus meeting at, on saturday at 9 45 uh, be in your place for that let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this, uh, this evening. Thank you for Jake coming and bringing us a message uh, from his heart, um, but, but from you, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that we just uh, uh, stay stirred up for you, Lord, and just remember the, the generations behind us that uh, we are following. Lord, I pray that we just uh, continue to, to teach our children, Lord, and our grandchildren to just stay on fire for you. I pray for as we leave tonight, you would just bless us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.